Hello everyone and welcome back to the periodontal series by Dr. Teeth. I am Dr. Sneha, your periodontology tutor. So today we are going to start off with the second section of our series. So in the first section we covered the basic structures of the periodontium and we also spoke about saliva and GCF. And today we are going to start off with the second section and starting with that we are going to talk about dental plaque. So what exactly is dental plaque? So it is a soft deposit that forms the biofilm adhering to the tooth surface or other hard surfaces of the oral cavity including removal and fixed restorations. So let's try and break this definition down. So the first part of the definition says that it is a soft deposit. So if we insert any kind of a probe or an explorer and we just go through the teeth or scrape it a bit then we can see this layer of plaque coming out. So it is a soft deposit and it forms a biofilm adhering to the teeth. Now we will be talking what exactly is a biofilm in the next slide itself but remember that plaque is a biofilm that adheres to the tooth structure. Now it can be seen either on a tooth structure or any other hard surface of the oral cavity. So why only hard surfaces? Because they are non-shedding in nature. So if we see the soft tissue like the gingiva, it is a shedding surface. That means the epithelial layer keep undergoing a shedding and new cells are regenerated. So that is the reason plaque accumulation does not occur on the gingiva or on the buccal mucosa or any other soft tissue. It only happens on hard tissue like the tooth or on certain other substances like restorations or prosthesis etc. Now let's see what exactly is a biofilm. Now if we take a tube and just place it in the outside uh, and, if it's, um, and if it is monsoon season then you can see that within few days then you can see that within few day days there is a layer of slimy then you can see that within few days a slimy layer gets formed onto this tubing. This slimy layer is nothing but a biofilm. So biofilm is a relatively undefined microbial community which is associated with the tooth surface or any other hard non-shedding material. So biofilm is a microbial community. So it is made up of millions of microorganisms which come together and form colony or form a community but it is undefinable that means it's highly varied in nature one biofilm can be completely different from any other biofilm which we see and it is only formed on the tooth surface or on other hard surfaces so we have spoken about why only hard surface because they are non-shedding in nature and if a biofilm is formed on the tooth surface, it is called as the dental plaque. So biofilm on a tooth surface is called as plaque. So that is why we say plaque as a biofilm. Now let's discuss the composition of dental plaque. Now as stated before, it is majorly made up of microorganisms. So the bulk of the plaque is made, made up of microorganisms which is about 70 to 80%. Uh, and these microorganisms are embedded in a matrix which is the intercellular matrix. So the microorganisms which are associated with plaque are mostly the bacteria but there can be other microorganisms such as viruses, protozoa, yeasts and fungi that can also be seen. Coming to the intercellular matrix, it is either made up of the organic components which involves approximately 30% of polysaccharides, 30% of proteins, 15% of lipids, 
and certain glycoproteins as well. Whereas the inorganic components of the intercellular matrix mainly involve the sodium, the calcium, potassium and traces of fluorides. So now that we have spoken about the composition, just now let's discuss about the classification of dental plaque. Now we can classify dental plaque based upon the location. As first the supragingival plaque. So if this is the gingival margin right here, then the plaque which is formed coronal to the gingival margin is the supragingival plaque. So this plaque can be seen through the naked eye. It is present coronal to the gingival margin. Whereas if it is seen apical to the gingival margin, it is called as the subgingival plaque. So over here, this right here is the gingival margin and the plaque which is seen apical to it, it is called as the subgingival plaque. Now we have a third category of marginal plaque. So if the plaque is formed right at the gingival margin, it is termed as the marginal plaque. So based on the location, we can classify it as supragingival, subgingival or marginal plaque. Now the second way in which we can classify plaque is based upon its attachment. Now based upon the attachment, we can classify the plaque as the attached plaque or the unattached plaque. So the unattached plaque is the plaque which is present in the gingival sulcus and it is not attached to either the tooth or any other tissue. So it is free or planktonic in nature. So if we see these bacteria right here which are present in the gingival sulcus, they are not attached to either the tooth or the epithelium. So they are called as the unattached plaque. Whereas the attached plaque can be again of two types. It can be either the tooth associated plaque or it can be the tissue associated plaque. So right here which you see are the tooth associated plaque and this tooth associated plaque are usually gram positive in nature, gram positive species and they are more or less associated with either root caries formation or it can cause calculus formation. Now when we come to the tissue associated plaque, so right here we have the epithelium. So it's either called as the tissue associated or the epithelium associated plaque. And these are mainly gram negative in nature or they can be spirochetes. And these bacteria can be first associated with the epithelium and then it can migrate into the connective tissue and ultimately it can cause destruction of the alveolar bone. So the tissue associated plaque is associated with periodontal destruction. Uh, so tooth associated plaque causes root caries or calculus formation whereas tissue associated plaque causes periodontal destruction. Now let's talk about the steps of formation of dental plaque. So there are three major steps which are involved. First is the formation of pellicle on the tooth surface. The second step is the initial adhesion and the attachment of the bacteria to the pellicle. And the third step is the colonization and plaque maturation. So let's first talk about the formation of the acquired pellicle. So we have the tooth surface right here and within few minutes of brushing the saliva or acquired pellicle is formed on the tooth surface. So this is the acquired pellicle. Now if we talk about the composition of this acquired pellicle then it mainly consists of components of the saliva such as uh, the peptides, the glycoproteins, uh, we have the keratins and the mucins 
and basically these uh, salivary proteins get adsorbed onto the surface of the tooth. Now if we talk about the thickness of this acquired pellicle, it is highly varied. It can uh, range between 100 nanometers within 2 hours. And this can go up to 1000 nanometers in thickness. Now what is the function of this uh, acquired pellicle? The acquired pellicle helps in formation of binding sites for the bacterial binding. So if you can see these are certain binding sites which the acquired pellicle consists of and they help in bacterial binding. And we'll see how exactly does that happen in the second step. So the second step of plaque formation is the initial adhesion followed by the attachment of the bacteria. So this step can be further divided into three more subcategories. The first is the transport of the bacteria onto the surface. The second is the initial adhesion which is reversible in nature. So for example, if we brush uh, during the initial adhesion stage, then the bacteria can get dislodged uh, from that area. Whereas the third step is the strong attachment and this is an irreversible process. So once the bacteria gets strongly attached to the tooth, it is very difficult to disrupt the bacteria. So let's see these steps. So the first step is the transport. Now the bacteria can reach the acquired pellicle through either the process of chemotaxis It can uh, move through Brownian movement. Or it can reach the surface through sedimentation through the liquid flow. So these are the three ways by which the bacteria can actually reach the acquired pellicle. The second step after reaching the acquired pellicle is the initial adhesion. So remember this initial adhesion is reversible in nature. Now this adhesion takes place when the bacteria reaches very close to the tooth surface. So when it reaches quite close, then there are two types of forces that can act. Either there is van der Waal forces of attraction So remember these are the attractive forces or we have the electrostatic forces of repulsion. So these are the forces which repulse the bacteria. Now there is something called as the Gibbs free energy. Now based upon the Gibbs free energy and according to the DLVO, th DLVO theory based upon the names of the scientists who gave this theory. Now they stated that if the van der Waal forces of attraction is more as compared to the electrostatic forces of repulsion, then the bacteria gets adhered onto the tooth surface. So adhesion will take on to the tooth surface. Whereas if electrostatic forces of repulsion are more as compared to the van der Waal forces of attraction, then it is but obvious that the bacteria get repulsed and it does not get adhered onto the tooth surface. So for bacterial adhesion to occur, the van der Waal forces of attraction has to be more as compared to the forces of repulsion. Now coming on to the third category, uh, which is the strong attachment. So once the adhesion of the bacteria has occurred onto the tooth surface, the bacteria will get strongly attached in that position. Now how exactly does that happen? It happens through the, it happens through certain receptors. So remember we spoke about binding sites present on the acquired pellicle. So these binding sites are nothing but receptors which are then attached to the complementary 
adhesins which are present on the bacteria. So if this is the bacteria, now this will contain certain adhesins which will bind to the receptors through a lock and key mechanism. So if this is the receptor and this is the adhesin, it binds through a lock and key fashion and attachment of the bacteria will take place. Now a good example of this is the presence of antigen 1 and 2 family So these are the adhesins which are present on streptococci. So if this is a streptococci cell, so these are the adhesins which are present on the streptococci and they go and bind to the GP340 receptor which is present on the acquired pellicle. So this is how the binding or the attachment takes place. Coming on to the final step of plaque formation which is the colonization and plaque maturation. Now within two days of undisturbed plaque we can see that the primary colonizers or the first bacteria which are uh, attached to the tooth are also called as the primary colonizers or early colonizers. So these are formed within two days of undisturbed plaque. And these primary colonizers will then produce a slime layer which facilitate the secondary colonizers to come and get attached. So this is how the plaque sample will grow in size and in number. Now there are two mechanisms by which this colonization can occur. The first mechanism is called as the co-adhesion. So in this, there is interaction which is present between the bacteria which is already adherent to the surface. So if this is the tooth surface right here, the bacteria is already adherent to this uh, tooth surface and this adherent bacteria then gets attached to the suspended or the free flowing bacteria. So right here, if you can see the free flowing bacteria, they get adhered onto this uh, bacteria which is uh, already present on the tooth surface. So this is one type of adhesion that can occur and the second type is called as the co-aggregation. Now this type of interaction occurs when both the bacteria are, subs are suspended or are free flowing. So if you can see right here there is interaction of the bacteria that is occurring when both the bacteria are suspended. So here the primary bacteria is not attached to the tooth, it is suspended plus it is getting attached to the surrounding bacteria. So this is termed as co-aggregation. Now different species or different strains of similar species have different co-aggregate patterns and let's see these patterns. So the first pattern is called as the corn cob appearance. So it looks very similar to the corn that we eat. So this coaggregation occurs due to the adherence of the streptococcus cocci. So these are small cocci cells which get adhered to either a corny bacterium or a actinomycete. So we have a central corny bacterium or actinomyces and surrounding them we have streptococci species. Whereas the next appearance is the test tube brush appearance. 